Hi, Dr. P here, and I am going to try to go some distance toward figuring out what attracts people to play games. There are three questions involved here. Why or why not play games? Why not do something else? What aspects of particular games attract players to play those games? And what keeps people playing a particular game over and over again? Now, many academics have written about this in one way or another. These are my personal observations rather than a discussion of academic views, because I find that game studies views are sometimes nonsense historically, and perhaps that might be because game studies people often make the mistake of assuming everyone likes what they like, does what they do, plays the way they play, if they play at all. And of course, in practice, there are a great many different ways of doing all those things. Academics don't like untidiness, or at least the people in game studies. So why play games? Well, you have activity in a safe environment, unlike the real world. You can have intellectual stimulus. You can have social camaraderie. You can have privacy in the case of playing video games. You don't have anybody else around if you're playing a single player video game or if you're playing online with other people. They're not with you. Mastery in the sense of solving a puzzle in video games, it's beating the game, which is a puzzle. Or mastery in a sense of competitive mastery, being better at the game than other people. And occasionally you might learn something from beyond game playing. Why not play to make the contrast? Well, it's time consuming. You might find better things to do with your time. It can be frustrating. Where's the line between tension that's desirable and frustration that's not desirable? A person may not be competitive as many games require. A person might not like puzzles, as many games require. The person might think that games are kid stuff. But perhaps the biggest reason is that the people were never introduced to playing the kinds of games that they might like to play. Because there are lots of different kinds of games. You can imagine somebody who potentially is going to like role-playing games, but all they've ever seen are video games or board games or something like that. And then they finally see a tabletop role-playing game and they love it. Now, the second question, what attracts people to play a particular game? <clears throat> well, the story or history of the game, if only as reflected on the back of the box in tabletop games, might be sufficient. A lot of advertising, especially for video games, might attract people to play a particular game. The genre of, uh, of the game is important. Genres in video games strongly determine what the player is able to do and what they expect to happen. That's not true in, in some other kinds of games. Genre, in other words, communicates what the game is all about. And a particular player might like a particular genre, and that's that. The theme, even though the theme is dumb sometimes, might attract people. That's kind of related to story history. The novelty of a particular game, this is not just call to the new general desire that things are new, but new mechanisms perhaps in tabletop games or new mechanisms perhaps in video games. Now, in tabletop games specifically, we can add a few other things. The cover can attract somebody to play a game. The cover of the box. There's a decades old saying about novels that a bad novel with a good cover will sell. A good novel with a bad cover will not sell. Is the same true for games. Even the weight of the box can influence a buyer amazingly enough. They pick up a box. Oh, this is a really heavy box. That's cool. I think that's a little bit of nonsense, but that's how people seem to be influenced. Nowadays, you have additional things, the looks of the game, the old oh shiny gang, and the game that just wants lots of stuff. I've seen people reviewing games saying just the amount of stuff in the box is worthwhile. 
And I think that's nonsense because the point of a game is to play it. But for many two people, that is not true. In fact, this quotation, which is excellent that I ran across on the internet, can apply. Quote, those who have too little value quantity. Those who have enough value quality. And those who have too much value presentation. In other words, as we have more and more stuff, presentation can become more and more valuable. But there are lots of more reasons to play, and here's just some of them. Exploration is a very popular reason. In other words, exploring the game to find out how it works and then move on to the next one. Spectacle, which is more related to how the game looks, especially video games. It can be just a way to spend some time. It can be a way to show off. Somebody can be a tension junkie, kind of like basketball coaches, tension junkies. And they like the tension of playing games. Uh, people who like to find solutions. I beat the video game. The cleverness of it, the strategy, the ha-has of funny games, the interesting challenges. I'm sure we can add a lot more, but that uh, shows how many different reasons there can be for playing games and for playing particular games. Then we can ask, what keeps people playing games? Well, the old notion is gameplay depth. The new notion is variety, because deep games require more thought than most people want in their entertainment, and more study sometimes. Rewards. Commonly in free-to-play video games, you get rewarded. Especially the pay-to-win games, you can pay and win the game. Graphics or looks is another reason to keep playing a game. Story is not the the reason it's relatively few cases because once the story is known is it worth playing again the story in a game is more for selling it than for retaining players now remember this is my take and your mileage may vary thanks for listening